Hello everyone. So we are going to start the next part of structural isomerism. In the last part, we had spoken about the chain and positional isomerism. We had understood the basic concept of isomerism, that what exactly is the isomerism means. And today we'll go to the next part, that is functional isomerism and metamerism. As I mentioned earlier, the tautomerism is something which we'll be learning after knowing the concept of resonance. So that we'll cover in the later parts. Okay. So let's start with the functional isomerism first, and let's understand what exactly it is. So go, let's go by the definition. Compounds possessing same molecular formula but differ in the properties due to the difference in their functional group. Here what we are looking at that we will have a same molecular formula, two different or more than two different compounds with the different functional groups. So formula will remain same but the functional group what these molecules possess would be different. Okay, So they will have difference in the properties due to the difference in the functional group. And that is why these uh, uh, isomers or these compounds are called as functional isomers and the phenomena is called as functional isomerism. What all different conditions you have to look for? First of all, it is mandatory for functional group to be different. Okay, And chain and positional isomers will not be considered. That means if there is only difference in the chain or, dif dif or difference in the position of the functional group, that will not be considered as functional isomerism. Functional isomerism or functional isomers are the ones where there must be difference in the functional group. As simple as that. Okay, so let's begin and see some examples. Let's say if I have a molecular formula C2H6O. C2H6Os. What all probable compounds we can prepare uh, using this formula? We can form CH3CH2OH, right? This compound is again look at the formula: two carbon, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. This is ethanol. So basically, the functional group what I'm using over here is OH. Mind it, if you're getting any uh, molecular formula, it is mandatory for you to check the DU of that compound by using the general formula of C plus one minus h plus x minus n divided by 2 because this helps you in knowing whether you have any unsaturation in the compound or not or whether you have a cyclic chain in the compound or not. So here you have C2H6O, right? So first of all, let's check the DU of it. How many carbons? Two carbons, 2 plus 1. Then minus how many hydrogens? 6. Any, any halogen, nitrogen? No, nothing is there. Uh, so it is. it has become... 2. So it is 3 minus 6 by 2. That is again 3. So du is 0. So neither there is a double bond nor there is a cyclic chain. It's simple straight chain with all single bonds in it. So we have here CH3CH2OH as a compound. Then only you will you will start writing the compounds because you would know how the skeleton would be. So, so all the carbons are singly bonded. This is alcohol. The functional group is OH. The another compound what we can form using this is CH3OCH3. Basically I have just rearranged the atoms so that it can become a different functional group and the next functional group what we got is ether right so here the functional group is ether in the in the previous case it was alcohol so two different functional groups the number of carbons are same the number of hydrogens are same number of oxygens are same so molecular formula is exactly same but the functional group is varying and hence the properties will vary so this kind of isomerism is called as functional isomerism we will see few more examples to understand where all the functional isomerism works or which all different compounds can have the functional isomers of theirs okay so let's see the next part of it so here are some listed examples first i have taken ethanoic acid so basically i am dealing with a carboxylic acid and carboxylic acid can have its own functional isomer as ester so coo serves as an ester and acts as a functional isomer of the carboxylic acids in general so here i have ethanoic acid it's uh, uh, functional isomer can be methyl methanoate. How many carbons are there? There are two carbons here. All of you look at it, look at it very carefully. General formula is C2H4O2. So C2H4O2 is the formula for ethanoic acid and C2H4O2 is the formula for ester also. Right? So if you get a molecular formula like this, try to make different compounds and uh, different compounds with the different functional groups and those will be functional isomers of each other. So this is one. Then aldehydes can have isomeric ketones as functional isomers. So the same molecular formula can give you an aldehyde and same molecular formula can give you ketone. So for example, I have take, taken CH3, CH2, CHO. The corresponding functional isomer can be by shifting the C double bond O internally and then bring this carbon out and it will be CH3, CO, CH3. It will become a ketone now. 
Similarly, amides. Amides are CONH2 group and this CONH2 group can be rearranged to form a different functional group that is oxime. So, here I had CH3, C double bond O, NH2. This was my group. What can I do to rearrange it? I have to make it a different functional group. I can break this double bond over here, can form a double bond here. One hydrogen will shift over here. So, it will become CH3, CH double bond NH and CH double bond NH is oxime group. Please remember this, CH double bond NH is an oxime group, so it has become a different functional group with the same molecular formula. So basically just rearrangement of the atoms by uh, converting one functional group to another functional group and you will get the respective functional isomers. Similarly, when you have amines, amines can be of primary, secondary and tertiary type. So when you talk about amine group, the primary, secondary and tertiary basically serve as three different functional groups. Okay, and hence they are functional isomers of each other. So primary compound and secondary co secondary compound for the same kind of molecular formula will be two functional uh, isomers. Let's say if I say I have CH3, CH2, NH2, this is my compound. This is my primary amine. I can make its corresponding secondary amine by pushing this N in and bringing the carbon out and this will become CH3, NH, CH3. So this has become a secondary amine. And it has become the functional isomer also. So we treat primary amine, secondary amine and tertiary amine as three different functional groups rather than treating them as the same functional group. So primary, secondary, tertiary amines with the same molecular formula will be functional isomers of each other. For example, I have written here CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2. This is primary. I bring the nitrogen in and put the two chains, put two R groups next to it. It will be secondary. If I put three R groups, by rearranging the chain that CH3, CH3, CH3 and N, this is tertiary amine and all three are different functional groups and three are functional, Three, all the three are will be considered as functional isomers. Okay, the next set of examples, cyanide has its, its uh, functional isomer as isocyanide. So basically you have CH3, CN, you can rearrange it to form NCN, it will become isocyanide. This is one example of functional isomer. So it's not only in this case, but any compound with cyanide can have its functional isomer as isocyanide. Similarly, we have taken sulfonic acid. Sulfonic acid is CH3, CH2, SO3H, right? It can be rearranged, specific, I mean, to be more precise, any, any acid can be converted into ester. Uh, uh, as a functional isomer of it. So here it is sulfonic acid can be converted into respective sulfonate ester. How it will be? Let's see. I have CH3, CH2, S, double bond O, double bond O, OH. This is the thing. I bring the CH3 out, CH2 out and this will become CH3, S, double bond O, double bond O, O and CH3. So now it has become ester. Right, so this is sulfonic ester, and that's how exactly your functional isomerism works. Let's look at the next example. Next is phenolic alcohol. We call this thing phenolic alcohol. This is phenol, and anything else, any R group attached to it will be called as phenolic alcohol. See, placing OH directly on benzene is one functional group, and placing OH on the carbon chain, that is R group, is another functional group. So this is your benzene, this is the aromatic ring, your OH is present on it, then it is called as phenol. So we treat it as a different group. And if I have benzene with uh, ROH or whatever the chain it is and then OH, then this is, this alcohol, this will be acting as a branch. So it will be called as phenyl, uh, uh, phenyl al alkanol, right? This will be the name. And this compound will be acting as a different functional group. So if OH is present on the carbon chain, the simple side chain, or you can say the normal open chain, then it will be a different group. If it is on the benzene, then it is a different group. So phenolic alcohol and alcohols are also uh, functional isomers of each other when OH is present on the side chain, not on the benzene. So on benzene, it will be called as phenolic alcohol. On side chain, it will be called as normal alcohol, where benzene will be acting as a branch. Next is, there is again the functional isomeric relationship between nitro and nitrito. Nitro is N double bond O single bond O group. I hope you remember we have done this in nomenclature and nitrito group is O N double bond O. So when this group rearranges itself, 
basically it depends what type of uh, what is the bonding point with the carbon if the bonding point is oxygen then it is nitrito if bonding point is nitrogen then it is nitro so this kind of switch over is also called as functional isomerism these this, that's how you can rearrange the number of nitrogens will remain same oxygen will remain same carbon will remain same and hydrogen will remain same and it will be forming its functional isomer as nitrito okay similarly thio alcohols will have uh, the functional isomers as thio ether what we are doing ch3 ch2 sh i can bring this carbon out and this will become ch3 s ch3 so this is alcohol right now this is thiol basically and this will become thio ether this is exactly same as how alcohols work so alcohols have corresponding ethers as a uh, uh, functional isomers. Similarly, thiols have the corresponding uh, uh, thioethers as the functional isomers. Similarly, look at here, I have butyne. So, basically, I have a triple bonded structure. Triple bonded structure can, I mean, the same formula will be valid for dienes also. Whatever the molecular formula of alkyne is, the same molecular formula will be for dienes and dienes means two double bonds. So definitely there is a difference in the functional group and hence these will be functional isomers of each other. So here I have taken butyne. You look at the same thing. I have the here also the formula is C4H6 and here also the formula is C4H6. So formula of diene or so, uh, formula of ions are exactly same. Okay, so here are these examples which gives you the fair idea about how functional isomerism works and now we have to see and solve some questions. These were the examples which I was giving you and now we will talk about the solved examples and unsolved examples. I'll give you some questions. Let's try it out how you can get the questions from functional isomerism part. So first question is if the molecular formula is C3H6O2, how many carboxylic acid and esters are possible with this molecular formula and what is the relation among them? So I have already told you how to find out the isomeric relationship. We know three type of isomers till now, chain isomers, position isomers and functional isomers. So we have to find out the relation between one isomer and the another. So here I am not specifically targeting the functional isomer, whatever different isomers are possible for respective carboxylic acid or ester can, which can be formed using this formula that all we have to write and then find out the relation. So first of all, the first step to solve such questions is find out the DU that we understand that there is a carboxylic acid and ester carboxylic acid or ester group in these compounds. But apart from that, is there anywhere else we have a double bond or a cyclic chain? If it is, then we will see it, it through the DU. So how we will calculate the DU? C plus 1 minus H plus X minus N. This is a mandatory part. You cannot skip it. You cannot just take it very lightly because you will never get to know uh, just by looking at the formula whether there is a double bond, triple bond or there is a cyclic structure in the uh, in this compound or not that you can identify only by calculating the du so du is uh, so here it is four hydrogen the six by two so four minus three so one du is one and that means there is only one double bond and that one double bond is with the carboxylic acids oxygen we cannot have any other double bond we already know that we want to form the carboxylic acid or ester so there is carbon double bond oxygen and that is giving you du1 so that means apart from that double bond there is no other double bond or cyclic chain in the structure so we just have to form the simple straight structures try it out on your own write it in your notebook and then we will check the answer whether it's right or wrong so i hope you would have done this so let's see the uh, compounds which can be formed this is the carboxylic acid what can we form this is your propanoic acid right and two esters which can be formed one is ch3 coo ch3 and another is because the, along with this oxygen it is mandatory to have an R group over here because if it will be hydrogen then it will become carboxylic acid. So if, if the R group is there then this will be I am shifting both the carbons over here and then it will become CH2 CH3 and we can have an hydrogen over here. So the name of this ester will be uh, ethyl methanoate. I hope you remember how to name it. I told you the main chain is still oxygen and whatever is next to the oxygen, the R group is a branch. So that will come in the prefix. Here the name is met methyl ethanoate, sorry. So CH3 is out of the main chain and there are two C's here. So ethanoate over here. So that's how exactly you have to name the compounds. 
okay this is how your esters are named so all the three names are different all the three are different compounds now we have to find out the relation if i want to find the relation between first and second the functional group is changing automatically it is functional isomerism if i compare first and third the functional group is changing and again it is a functional isomer but if i compare second and third the functional group is not changing hence this, these are not functional isomers of each other what exactly they are we will learn it later on uh, these are generally called as metamers but right now uh, you don't have to know this you just need to know whether these are functional isomers or not of each other or if they fall into chain isomers or positional isomers or like that okay now let's try out the next question so next question is i have the general formula cn h2 n plus 3 n n is for nitrogen and here the small n has been given as 3 so let's find out the molecular formula first molecular formula is going to be c3 h uh, H6 plus 3 that's 9 and then N I hope I have done everything right yeah and then I have to find out the DU as I mentioned that's an important and mandatory part so 3 plus 1 minus 9 minus 1 divided by 2 so 4 minus 4 so 0 so DU is 0 over here okay so no double bond no triple bond no cyclic chain nothing is there so it's all single bonded now you have to write the compounds which can be formed using this so diff different compounds what you can if it's a single bond with the nitrogen if it's all single bonds then the only one group which which is possible with nitrogen is the amine group okay because amine is uh, r nh2 so here there is a single bond with nitrogen also and the carbon chain is also singly bonded so here we can have three different kind of uh, basically uh, amine groups here primary secondary and tertiary let's see what all we can form i can write one formula like this another i can write i can change the position of nh2 and i can write it like this another i can write it as c c n h and c i have not written hydrogens if you write hydrogens hydrogens are going to be correct i mean the number will not vary so it's let me just write ch3 ch ch2 ch3 ch2 ch3 and i can also form a tertiary uh, i mean using this so i have got four different isomers from here right now we don't know the relation between them we have to figure out the relation now so relation between first and second is functional isomerism second and fourth is functional isomerism second and third functional fourth and third functional what about first and third first and third are positional isomers why because the functional group is same only the position of functional group is changing hence it will be positional isomer so first and third is positional isomer apart from that everything else is functional isomers of each other so i have written it neatly over here you can just quickly check so fi between 1 and 2 fi between 1 and 3 1 between 1 and 4 is pi i mean here 1 2 3 4 is a little different fourth is the one uh, where the position is different so this is exactly how we will figure out the different isomers and the relations when the general formula is given you have to find out do you and then only you can proceed to the next step start with the next question now next question is cn h2n plus 1 n i think there is a typo over here i need to correct it this is not cn h2n plus 1 this is cn h2n minus 1 n please correct it okay where n is equal to 2 find all the uh, uh, functional isomers so first of all we will try to find out the molecular formula molecular formula is c2 h3 n and now along with this we will also try to find out the uh, du so du for the molecule is uh, 2 plus 1 minus 3 minus 1 divided by 2 so 3 minus 1 is 2 so du is 2 over here okay so basically when the du is 2 what all different combinations are possible 2 pi bonds 2 pi bonds or 1 pi bond 1 ring or 2 rings these are the combinations possible in your compound so let's start with the normal uh, 2 pi bond kind of structure so 2 pi bonds i can have let's say write it this way uh, c c so the simplest uh, 2 pi bond structure what i can imagine is uh, ch3 c triple bond n so is it is it following the formula c2 h3 n yes it is okay so one isomer possible is this another isomer possible is just opposite of it basically n triple bond c right third isomer possible is ch3 
no, not CH3. C H triple bond C N H2. I can make this also, right? So this is my uh, ethanamine. Correct. Other possible compound is C H2 double bond C double bond N H2. Uh, sorry, N H, not N H2. My bad. Yeah. So this can be a compound. So this double bond NH is imine and CH2 double bond C is nothing else but a normal alkyne. So uh, alkene, sorry. So we will write it as ethene imine, not amine. When it is sim single bond N, then it is amine. When it is double bond N, then it is imine. The functional group name is imine. So this is also possible. So these four structures are with a normal straight chain uh, are possible. Let's see if there are some cyclic structures possible. So I can make a chain like this. One chain is this and another chain is like this. But, okay. So, question, so fifth and sixth, both are cyclic chains with a pi bond um, and, for, and giving you the DU2. But the problem here in this particular compound is, like fifth and sixth is, that though uh, theoretically these are possible, practically these are not. Why? Because the both of the structures are anti-aromatic structures. What exactly is anti-aromatic? You have not learnt it now. When we will go for the aromaticity at that time, I'll explain you. So for now, uh, for this specific case, you can just take it as a fact that these two compounds are not possible because anti-aromatic compounds are the compounds which are highly unstable at the room temperature or you can say we gen these are an, in general very unstable compounds. So both of these structures are anti-aromatic. What are the rules to find out anti-aromatic aromaticity in a compound or not? That all we will discuss. So that's out of scope for now. But uh, for now, uh, you just take it as a fact and that means there are total four isomers which are possible. Fifth and sixth theoretically possible, actually not possible. Okay, now if I have to find out uh, whether all of these are functional isomers of each other. Yeah, exactly. CC triple bond N and NC is functional isomer of each other. CAN with NH2 is also functional isomer of each other. CN with imine is also functional isomer. And same is the case for N triple bond C with NH2 and N triple bond C with NH. And third with fourth. So all of these are functional isomers of each other. That's how exactly you have to find the uh, uh, functional isomers when a question is given. The first and very first step is to find out the DU. If you will not find out the DU, you will not get the right structure of the uh, chain. Okay. So here we are done uh, with these uh, compounds. Okay. I think I did a small mistake over here. And what was it is I wanted to solve CNH2N plus 1N and I changed it to CNH2N minus 1N. Though we could actually solve this one also. Yeah. So we could actually see the isomers of this also. So uh, what I'll do is. I have given you the cases of CNH2N minus 1N. Note this down. Uh, and then I'll clean up the space and we will try out for CNH2N plus 1N also. Okay. Let's try out these uh, the isomers for this compound also. And then we will go to the next part. CNH2N plus 1. Again, N is equal to 2. The formula will be C2H5N. Okay. DU is going to be 1. How DU is going to be 1? It's 3 minus 5 minus 1 divided by 2 so 3 minus um, 2 so yeah du is 1 over here so that means there is going to be one pi bond or one ring over here so the so the chain will have chain will be having one pi bond or uh, one ring okay so let's figure out what all different structures can be formed the first structure what we can form using this is first write it this way. So I can have an NH2 here with a double bond. So it will be CH2, CH and NH2. This is possible. Yeah. So this will be called as ethene amine. This is one compound possible. Second possibility is I can write it as uh, CH2 N double bond CH, sorry, CH3 n double bond ch2 ch3 n double bond ch2 so uh, this compound in this compound what we have is we have uh, amine till here and then there is another chain present to it so we uh, basically double bond ch2 is nothing else but methylene group if you remember we had done this in iupac naming so we will call it as n methylene n methylene uh, methanamine so this can also be formed okay 
the another thing what we can form is uh, you form imine so basically carbon double bond nitrogen so it's ch3 ch double bond nh this can be formed right so this is your um, ethane amine and what else can we form can we form anything else so as i mentioned one pi bond so we have done all the cases where one pi bond was present one ring let's try out if ring is possible so yes this is how the ring is possible so this is your ring the two carb one carbon here one carbon here and nh here so these four are possible all these are functional isomers of each other whereas when you talk about the fourth one fourth one is actually a ring forming now rather than straight chain you are getting a ring over here such kind of isomerism has a specific name also and we call it as ring chain isomerism though it's not a different thing it's just a part of functional isomerism so ring chain isomerism is nothing new it's just part of functional isomerism we define it separately because here we are comparing one straight chain and one cyclic chain so what exactly is ring is a ring chain isomerism when you have two compounds one in open chain one in the closed chain then and they have the same molecular formula then they are called as ring chain isomers so basically one structure will be open chain structure another chain another structure will be a closed chain structure when when do these two compounds are there having same molecular formula these are called as ring chain isomers which are nothing else but the part of functional isomers only so you can in the broader term call them functional isomers or to be if you want to be very specific then you can call them ring chain isomers either way is fine okay so uh, one example i have shown you that the fourth one is uh, your ring chain isomer of second and third and so on when you want to find out the relation between second and fourth it's ring chain uh, first and fourth it's ring chain so you call it ring chain you call it functional it won't matter much but you have to look at the options which are given in the question and accordingly you have to mark if ring chain has been given specifically please mark ring chain if both are given mark both depending upon you have a multiple answer correct or the single answer correct question now let's see few more examples okay so let's say i have taken this example as ch3 ch2 double bond uh, ch3 ch double bond ch2 the general formula or the molecular formula is compound is c3 h6 so this is the same formula for this cycle also and the same formula is for that chain also so these two because one is straight chain one is a cyclic chain it will be called these two are, will be called as ring chain isomers similarly if you have an aldehyde and if you make a cyclic ether out of it the molecular formula remains same with the same molecular formula you can get get an aldehyde you can get a ketone and you can get a ketone is not possible in this case because ketone will require minimum three carbons but in this case at least aldehyde and the cyclic ether is possible so this cyclic ether will be a ring chain isomer so i hope you would have understood anything which gets converted into ring will be considered as ring chain isomer which is part of functional isomer isomerism only if if it has been mentioned that you need to choose ring chain isomer then you will specifically mark ring if if it's not mentioned then all the functional isomers are same i mean no matter it's a ring or it's a straight chain now let's quickly see a question and then we will again we have, we know now three different type of isomerisms and now we will be finding their relationships so we have the general formula c4h8 we will draw all the type of isomers possible for out of this structure and then we will find out the relation between them so different uh, structures possible are but 1 ene cyclobutene but 2 ene 2 methyl cyclopropane and 2 methyl cyclopropene all these are possible okay these are the structures uh, which can be formed using this molecular formula now let's compare their relationship or let's figure out their relationship if you want to see the relationship between first and second one is straight another is cycle so that means one is a normal straight chain compound another is cyclic compound so automatically comes under the ring chain isomerism relationship look at the first one and third one in first one and third one chain is exactly same only the position of double bond is varying hence it is positional isomerism look at first and fourth again first one is straight and the fourth one is cyclic hence it will come under ring chain isomerism look at first and fifth the chain also different the branch is also different so basically the previous one didn't have a branch and now in this one the fifth one has a branch and the chain is shorter so basically main chain and the branch both are varying and hence it will be called as chain isomers of each other now seconds second compounds relation with other compounds second and third again ring chain isomerism for uh, second and fourth what is happening here both are rings but different rings so main chain is different here branches are different so it will become chain isomerism not ring chain both the compounds are already in the chain form the main chain or the principal carbon chain is varying and the branches varying hence it will come under chain isomerism look at second and fifth 
second and fifth one is cycle one is uh, one is cyclic and one is open chain so it will be ring chain isomerism look at the third and fourth one is open one is ring ring chain isomerism look at third and fifth third and fifth both are open chain but the main chain and the branch is different hence it will be chain isomerism look at fourth and fifth one is ring and one is open chain so it will come under ring chain isomerism so i hope you would have got it i have got it i, I know i have i've, I've uh, spoken a little faster you can just slow down think about it try it out on your, on your own and then can understand how it is happening so here i have told you answer i am not supposed to you should try this question on your own and then compare your answer and my answer so here uh, mostly we are done with the uh, ring chain isomerism now let's go to the next question next question we i have already discussed with you uh, previously itself so i am not repeating it again i had already discussed c2h3n uh, where du was 2 and i had made all these uh, different uh, forms uh, of this compound or different uh, isomers of this compound and then i told you these two compounds are anti aromatic and that is the reason why we will not be including them so total number of isomers are four this case i have already discussed early in the earlier slide itself so now i i'm just left with the uh, figuring out the relationship between each and all, each of them and all of them are functional isomers of each other because in every case the, fun the functional group is changing from uh, cyanide to isocyanide from imine to imine uh, from amine to imine, from amine to nitrile, from amine to isocyanide. And all, in all these cases, the functional groups are changing, hence all are functional isomers of each other. So this case also we have discussed earlier. This anti-aromatic thing I told you, I'll be explaining you once we'll go for the aromaticity. Once, when, once I'll explain you what is aromatic compounds in detail, then non-aromatic and then anti-aromatic. At that time, we'll be covering it up and you will get a clear picture. For now, you can just treat it as a fact that these two compounds are unstable compounds and hence do not form they do not exist okay so now let's discuss those cases same as anti-aromatic which cannot be prepared at the room temperature or you can say which are not stable at the room temperature hence when whenever we'll be asked to write the functional isomers we will not be writing these as the functional isomers of any compound okay one is anti-aromatic which has been already explained to you second comes is germinal diol i have written gem diol over here you can also call it as germinal diols diol automatically means the two alcohols will be there and germinal means the term germinal means when two oh groups are present on the same carbon on exactly same carbon so here it's like you have ch3 ch2 c oh oh and hydrogen so basically two oh groups are present over here on the same carbon this kind these kind of alcohols are called as germinal diols why why these are not stable because they do not tend to be in this state they basically lose water molecule whenever germinal diol is forming in any case and eventually it becomes a ketone or aldehyde depending upon the position of uh, two alcohols so, so let me just tell you let's say if i have ch3 ch2 ch oh and oh what will happen is the moment it will it will form it will lose the water molecule due to the repulsion forces oh and oh will repel each other and to re to minimize the repulsion they will lose oh from one end and hydrogen from one end and the compound will become ch3 ch2 ch and double bond oxygen so it has become aldehyde now if this would have been in the center let's say if this would have been the case not on the terminal carbon diol would be in the middle carbon somewhere then again oh would have gone from here and hydrogen would have gone from here and the compound would have become ch3 c double bond o ch3 so ketone would have formed so basically diols are not possible and diols are not stable okay whenever these will be formed they'll automatically get converted into aldehydes or respective ketones so we do not write these structures as functional isomers of any compound similarly enols are not possible why because enols at least straight chain enols are very unstable straight chain means long normal uh, straight chain compounds what exactly is the enol enol is the alcohol uh, where the alcohol group is present on the carbon which is sp2 hybridized so if you can see there is a double bond on this carbon and then oh is attached to it so such kind of compounds are not stable why because they also tend to convert into something else they basically change their structure and they convert into something else and that phenomena is called as tautomerism which i told you i'll tell you later on so till then till the time we understand what is tautomerism just understand that the open chain enols are not very stable and hence we do not write them or their existence is almost negligible so we do not write them whenever we have to write the functional isomers second uh, fourth is peroxy linkage so you never write compounds with 
oxygen oxygen linking with each other and then linking to the r chains here and there so that you don't right because these are also very unstable at the normal room temperature they tend to dissociate and get converted into the smaller pieces okay what those smaller pieces are called these are called as radicals how these are formed why these are formed all that we will discuss in general organic chemistry now comes the hemiacetal the same problem is there with the hemiacetals the same as what we had in geminal diol so here you have or and oh Uh, group present here so here also the repulsions happen and then this tends to get converted into something else so it doesn't exist in this form so any compound like this ch3 uh ch2 ch o ch3 oh so basically an ether group and alcohol group cannot come together on the same carbon because that forms a very 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 unstable compound okay and it does not exist at the room temperature so you have to keep all these things in the mind while forming the functional isomers of any particular compound now try out these two questions where you have to form the structural isomers of alcohol with molecular formula c5h12o i have already told you that alcohols are the functional isomers of ethers so basically alcohol and ethers are uh, having are sh uh, do share the same molecular formula so here i need all the structural isomers which can be formed it can be chain it can be position whatever can be formed with this molecular formula draw it and same is the case for ethers what all different type of isomers not only functional what all different type of total isomers can be formed using the ethers draw them and i'll ask you the number in the actual class So here we are done with the functional isomerism last isomerism for now is metamerism let's go through it it's it's very easy and very quick to do let's quickly go through it and then we'll be done with the structural isomer isomerism all together and we'll be dealing with the optical isomerism from the next class so let's begin with the definition of the metamerism first what is the definition this is about the compounds having same molecular formula which is the basis of isomerism for all kind of isomerisms but they have different nature of alkyl groups present on the both sides of the functional group so basically here very important thing is the functional group what you are taking whatever the functional group you have is bivalent minimum bivalent if not polyvalent at least bivalent bivalent means it should be connected through the r group r groups from two hands minimum it can be it can be three bonds which it can make through the r group or or two bonds or more than that i mean we basically deal with two and three uh but minimum two bonds it should be making with r groups on two different sides for example if i talk about ether it can be connected to one r group here and one group r group over here if i talk about the secondary amine it gets converted to uh, it's it's basically gets connected to one r group at one side another r group at another side if i talk about tertiary amine it gets connected like this so basically from three ends it is connecting to the r group so this kind of groups only can show metamerism okay and now what exactly is the metamerism that means when you are talking about two compounds the two compounds may have the same functional group so functional group is not changing at all okay only difference is coming in the r groups next to them so basically if i'm talking about uh secondary amine let's say of a compound or secondary you know, forget about secondary amine let's talk about the ether so it's if, if let's say i have taken ch3 ch2 o ch3 this is my ether so i have ethyl group at one side and methyl group at the another side uh i have not taken a very good uh, uh, uh example though let me just write ch2 ch3 so ethyl at one side and ethyl at the another side this is one ether now if i write it as ch3 o ch2 ch2 ch3 if i rearrange and write it this way now what r groups i have i have a methyl group over here and i have a propyl group over here so basically nature of the r group has has got changed earlier it was ethyl and ethyl now it is methyl and propyl so nature of alkyl group should be changing not the functional group this is very very important both the r groups uh, nature should be changing whenever you are talking about a metamer so what are the important conditions functional group should remain same and the atom or the functional group which we are exactly talking about should be polyvalent polyvalent means should be able to connect with the r chains with minimum two uh, bonds or more than that okay then it is nature of the functional group should not change as i mentioned functional group will, will remain same chain and positional isomers are not considered so basically when i say that i am i'm i'm just making a change in the chain of the compound or i'm just shifting the position of the functional group we are not considering those cases where how why 
all that we will discuss so you will get the cases where it will be chain isomer but not be metamer okay so let's understand let's see some structures and their respective metamers what can be formed let's say if i talk about ethers as i mentioned just now if i have ch3 ch2 o ch2 ch3 it can be also written as ch3 ch2 ch2 o ch3 both the things will have same molecular formula but it will be diethyl ether i'm just writing the common name and this will be methyl ethyl uh, sorry methyl propyl ether so there our group is changing now let's talk about few more cases i have thioethers thioethers also behave in the exactly same manner so this is your diethyl thioether diethyl thioether whereas if i shift the positions of carbons it will be uh, propyl methyl thioether okay Similar thing can be done with the esters also. Esters also carbon chains we can shift here and there. So here we had what? This I had as methyl propanoate. Propanoate. So three carbons, two carbons at this side and one carbon at this side. Whereas if I have shifted the carbons here and there, what I'll get is if I move this CH2 over here. So here I have this as my main chain and the other R group is also, this R group is also changing and this R group is also changing and the compound will be ethyl ethanoate. These are also metamers. Okay. Similar will be the case with sulfonic esters. No matter you talk about the carboxylic esters or sulfonic esters behave in the exactly same manner. You shift the CH2 over here and this will become CH3 SOO CH2 CH2 CSE. So one chain is propyl and other is methane. Again, I mean methyl. You will write it as methane sulfonic acid. Sorry, methane sulfonoate and propyl. That's how you'll be writing it. Propyl methyl sulfonate. Here you have two ethyl groups. So two R groups are ethyl ethyl. So ethyl groups and at one chain and methyl and propyl at the another chain. So R groups are changing and hence these are metamers. Second, same thing can be can be done for the secondary amines. So here you had CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2. Shift a carbon here and it will become CH3 NH. CH2, CH2, CH3. Even the name will change. One R group is propyl. So this will be propenamine. And it will be N methyl propenamine. Where earlier it was N ethyl ethanamine. So R group is changing. Both the R groups are changing uh, for both the compounds. And hence these will be metamers of each other. Let's see a few more cases. Tertiary amine behave, will behave in exactly the same manner. You have one R group here, one R group here, one R group here. Just make a small change in the R group, put a CH2 here and it will become CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2 and CH3. So basically R groups are changing again. At least two R groups are changing. So this will be metamers of each other. Same thing can happen for the anhydrides also. There is one R group here and one R group here. Make the changes in the R group, put a CH2 over here. R group will become methyl and one will become propyl. So change in the R groups, both the R groups will basically give you the respective metamer. Now look at this compound. Is this a metamer? Yes. Look at the uh, carbon chain. Here is one CH3 and here is CH2 CH3. Whereas in the in the in this compound what, what has been given, uh, we have CH3 over here and then CH2 CH3. So basically R group is not changing, but the point of linkage is changing. Just look at it very, very carefully. With the oxygen earlier, there was ethyl group attached. Whereas now with oxygen, methyl group is attached. Such kind of questions you get in the competition exam. So here, uh, it looks like both are same, but they are not. Because earlier with the oxygen, ethyl was present. Now methyl is present. Earlier with the carbon, CH3 was present. And now ethyl is present. So R groups are changing, right? So these are metamers of each other. Exactly same way. Look at this. This is sulfonoate. So here the linkage, just check the linkage. Sulfur is attached to benzene and oxygen is attached to cyclohexene. Now oxygen is attached to benzene and sulfur is attached to cyclohexene. So our group got changed and that's how these two are metamers of each other. Now look at one last example, uh, which is also very important and a little confusing when it comes to the competitive exam. So you have uh, uh, this as a... Um, I mean, I have taken this compound and I'm forming the different uh, metamers of it. So what is it? It is a ketone. Now in this ketones, we, we can have the CH2 shifted over here and come become CH3, CO, CH2, CH2, CH3, right? And then, or you can say I have taken a formula and I am wanting to write all the different uh, isomers of 
isomeric ketones for a given molecular formula so molecular formula is let's say c5 h10 c6 sorry c6 h10 o this is the molecular formula and if i give you the question that write all the write all isomeric ketones which can be formed which can be formed okay so in that case one is this possible another possibility is this and the third possibility is you make a change uh, in the in the chain so the chain is branched now okay so you have ch3 ch ch3 co ch3 so three different kind of uh, ketones i could form so in case of first and second if you want to find out the relation in many of the books you will find first and second are also called as positional isomers i preferably call it as uh, meta mers or uh, uh, yeah basically metamers why i am being i am calling them metamers because if only these two structures were possible for a given molecular formula then these would have been called as positional isomers but that's not the all we have another third case also possible where you are altering the chain and something else is forming though you may find in at many places this being called as a positional isomer also won't very much i mean basically you can mark both of them as the right answers depending upon what has been given in the question now when you talk about the third one look at it the third one has the change in chain if you compare the second and third isomer both have the position of ketones at the exact same position but the chain is varying right so now these will neither be positional isomer not the metamers these will be chain isomers because the ch because the position of your uh, c double bond o is not changing it is exactly same the chain the main chain is changing and the branch is changing so second and third will be considered as ci at many places there is a confusion between first and second isomer and first and second will be called as metamers ideally uh, when they can be metamers also and they can be positional isomers also we prefer calling them metamers rather than calling them positional isomers this is the thing okay this is the baseline if if a particular compound can be a positional isomer also and can be a meta um, a metamer also so we we will prefer marking it metamer until unless it is a multiple answer correct if it is a multiple answer correct and you have positional isomer also as an answer and metamer also as an answer we will mark both of them but if it is a single answer correct we will be marking them metamers okay so relationship between first and third again chain isomers because the main chain is changing so here we are done with the structural isomerism we are done with the four types of structural isomerism tautomerism is still left in next class we will be dealing with the uh, stereoisomerism so in stereoisomerism we'll be talking about geometrical isomerism and once that is done we will talk about the optical isomerism that is a very lengthy topic and very important also for the next things what you have to understand so uh, the easier part is done and a good conceptual part is going to start from the next class till then bye bye